Get Rich Education is brought to you by Ridge Lending Group and Corporate Direct. Welcome to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold, giving you information and ideas on the investment that has turned more ordinary people into millionaires and billionaires than anything else and can provide you with more wealth and happiness than you ever thought possible. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, and educator, Keith Weinhold. Welcome to Get Rich Education, installment 160. Hi, I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. With listeners in 186 world nations, the nation with the best real estate investing opportunities may very well be right here in the United States. And that location in the U.S. with the best cash flowing metrics might very well be Memphis, Tennessee. And we've talked at length with economists and demographers and geographers about why exactly that's true. Today, we're talking with a real estate investing company in Memphis, Mid-South home buyers about the real estate investing mistakes that you must avoid if you want the best opportunity to generate stable, durable, passive cash flow for yourself. Today's guests, unlike very few others, you know, they really pull back the curtain of their operation to show you just what goes on behind the scenes right there on the backstage and on the front stage. I've been inside their control room in Memphis with them. They've shown me some of the databases on a large computer monitor there. And I expect that they're going to be revealing to you on today's show because that's just how they are. In fact, you're listening as an investor interested in building wealth through real estate. But today's guests are so transparent sometimes that if you ever wanted to start and operate your own turnkey real estate investing company yourself, Today's show would be valuable to that person too. This is how you would want to think about serving your investors. As a listener, you already know what it means to buy a turnkey product from a real estate provider. Turnkey means that you buy the property already so that on day one, when you close, it's already been renovated, already tenanted, and held in that property manager's portfolio right away for you so that your job is to do little more than expect an electronic deposit right into your bank account every month. That's turnkey. Now, a good provider knows the predicted rent for your income property, and they're better going to know that rent number if they're a provider that's actually located in that geographic metro market themselves. I'm going to ask them about how a $125,000 Memphis home versus a, a home for half that price, 62 k When they both appear to cash flow for the same, say, $290, how they compare? Because you see the $125,000 home, well, that has more footage. That's going to be larger than the $62,000 home. And therefore, it's going to have more maintenance and more repairs. So will it really still cash flow $290 per month for you? Or will the smaller, less expensive 62K home actually be the better buy for you? And those prices stated, they are Memphis's specific price points. And you can get a sound home in a safe neighborhood in Memphis, Tennessee for those prices. I've been inside them myself with each of today's guests. That sought after 1% rent to price ratio, that's getting increasingly harder to find. But you might still find it in Memphis where you can get, say, $800 of monthly rent on an $80,000 purchase price home. That's that 1%. Today's provider, Mid South Home Buyers, even has a lifetime occupancy guarantee, which, gosh, is just remarkable in the industry. What that means is that if your property would ever fall vacant for as many as 90 days, then they begin paying your rent to you, they, the provider, from the 91st day on until it's occupied. And they put all that in writing. But see, they've never had to pay out on it, even though they've been in business for more than 15 years. They've just never had a vacancy longer than about 45 days, not one time in 15 years. That's just the type of rental market that you have here in a logistical and transportation hub in Memphis, where the jobs and the tenant incomes tied to those industries are highly conducive to producing the right tenant. Their website, by the way, is MidSouthHomeBuyers.com. Let's talk about it. 
Today's guests are two people that you may already be familiar with because their company, Memphis, Tennessee's Mid-South Home Buyers, is the turnkey real estate company that's helped more get-rich education listeners build passive income than anyone else. Increasingly, they might be the voice of the property that you own, basically. When money talks, how does it sound? I'm not really sure, but these two voices might very well be the sound of your passive income. First, meet Terry Kerr. Besides being a husband and a father of two, he is a full-time real estate investor and the president and founder of Mid-South Homebuyers. He owns more than 60 investment properties himself, so he eats his own cooking, he drinks his own home brew, and he has provided premier turnkey investments to repeat buyers around the world since 2002, so they're really one of the first turnkey providers ever anywhere. And he's also the owner and founder of Mid-South Best Rentals Property Management, and so they have that in-house management there in Memphis. Liz Nallen is an avid real estate investor who has spent the last 16 years of her professional life working in multiple markets as a property manager, marketing director, a realtor, a writer, and a public speaker. For the last eight years, she's been working side by side with Terry here. They've built Mid-South Homebuyers into one of the most successful turnkey providers in the entire U.S., Liz is also an excellent world traveler. I see her in various parts of the world in my social media feed all the time. Together, their company now manages over 1,600 rentals, and they've done more than 3,000 real estate transactions. Welcome back to Get Rich Education, Terry Kerr and Liz Nallen. Oh, thank you so much, Keith. We appreciate it. Thanks, Keith. It, Good to be back. I have also am drinking the home brew and uh, with a, a small five house portfolio of myself. So <laughs> the two liters drank around here very deeply. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I hope you don't hit that too hard until we're done here. <laughs> You've compiled a report that's become pretty influential in the real estate investing industry, and your report is called Terry's Tips for Turnkey Rental Property Investing, and it's subtitled, Find the Right Provider and Avoid Getting Ripped Off. Your report is about 19 fatal investor mistakes and the due diligence questions to avoid them. Before we jump into these due diligence questions, anything you want to tell us in general about the report? The report in general was built off of us hearing what other real estate investors in other parts of the U.S. were telling us their experiences were. So after several years of hearing, you know, uh, folks who scraped their knees with different providers here and there, we just started doing education just by talking to folks on the phone. And after a while, it just made sense to start, you know, putting it in an email. And then the email became a report. Is that about right, Liz? Absolutely. I just when you're inside the business, you kind of begin to know where the bodies are buried. And for the dentists and the heart surgeons and all the other folks out there wanting to get into the turnkey game, they don't always know where to poke around. And that's what we're trying to help with. So this is in the format of due diligence questions that you want to ask your prospective turnkey provider before you think about engaging with them. And really the first question you ask is, are you the actual owner of the property yourself or are you just marketing it for someone else? Are you effectively a middleman or are you the owner? Tell us about that. Sure. Well, there's lots of folks out there and there's nothing wrong with being a middleman. I mean, we just like uh, many other turnkey outfits buy properties from wholesalers. But what you need to know if, if you're looking to buy a property from somebody who is a turnkey seller is you want to find out if they are actually the owner of the property, because if they're not and they're wholesaling it, there is a markup there. And you want to find out whether or not if they don't own the property, do they even have that property under contract? I can't tell you how many times I've heard of folks that have bought a property from someone only to find out they did a double closing right at closing time right. and they weren't the actual owner of the property. Yeah. And I think what is important to understand is it's not always as transparent as you would think it would be. And again, it's not there's anything wrong with this. There's a service and matching a buyer with a seller. But sometimes the websites of these folks, it'll be, you know, blah, 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 real estate company. And then the houses are on there with the prices and the rents. And they speak from an ownership voice the entire time. And particularly when it's from a lot of different markets, not always, though, but that tends to be actually just they're pulling other providers houses and they are just a marketing machine making money off the transactions. And so the website may really make you think that, that you are working with the owner and it's still worth asking. Another thing that a prospective investor might see is they might see a property at 321 Maple Street located in Memphis. And they might ask the question of the provider, now, do you live in Memphis yourself? And if so, how long have you lived there? Sure. And that's kind of goes a little bit in the vein of do you own the property yourself, but not not always. There are plenty of folks out there, and again, it's not that there's anything wrong with this, but you need to know 
as an investor that's buying property in another market, if you're buying from a turnkey seller and that turnkey seller does not live in the market where you're buying property, that means that your turnkey seller is having to buy a house, rehab a house, sell a house, and then manage a property management company from afar. And the reason that that happens is because there are several markets that have a really good price to rent ratio, not as good as Memphis, but good. And so you'll have real estate investors that want to go into the turnkey business that they can't do it in their market. So they go to another market and they try to run the show from another city. Like I say, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's impossible to run the same tightness of a ship, if you will, if you live in you know another part of the country and are trying to manage your business from afar. And again, all of these questions were born out of the pain that we have heard our investor friends tell us about. And this one has caused quite a few folks some pain. And it's just something that, you know, regardless of where and who you're looking to buy from, just do some checking out and make it make sure that they actually live in the market where you're purchasing. Yeah. And I think the flip side of that as well, uh, Keith, really, and Terry, you can speak to this incredibly personally, which is that uh, we've been asked repeatedly to go into other markets. We do have a, a wait list. So there's some incentive there. And Terry, I mean, why do you pass? We don't want to go to another market. We could go to you know Cleveland or Indianapolis or somewhere and, and we could start buying, fixing and selling elsewhere. And we've got managers here that we could try to plop over there and, and run the show over there. But as hands-on as I am and as hands-on as Liz is and all the verifying and putting our eyes on this stuff, there's just no way for us to do it as efficiently in another city as it is in Memphis. We're going to stick with what brought us to the dance, and that's being you know, OCD and super mm -hmm. particular about running our show. It might not necessarily be a deal killer if the provider does not live in that market themselves, but if they don't, they might just not know about things like if a particular neighborhood or block is on the upswing or the downswing or just how safe it really is there. Another question a prospective investor might ask, it's a really good question of a turnkey provider, that investor might see and notice that your business model is selling properties that are in a distressed condition, and then they promise a quality renovation after purchase. Well, that investor might ask, now, how can I be sure that the renovations are going to be done with a high level of quality, and it's going to be durable, and it's not going to go over budget? Yeah, I mean, and I think the over budget is the big thing. Uh, holding costs, in my experience, it personally at large are the most underestimated things. And uh, we can speak personally that when you're doing a renovation, you know, we renovate every home to an exact, an identical standard. And sometimes we knock down a wall and just found something you couldn't have known was there. And we eat that budget change. No one else does. And uh, the time is on our dime. We're holding it. We're paying the cost of it without rent coming in, the uh, insurance for vacant properties. And a really good contractor can misestimate a rehab. It's just human nature. Yep, absolutely. And the cool thing about buying from a turnkey provider that has already rehabbed the house is you know what you're getting. Your costs are fixed. With most folks, if, if they're doing it right, the rent's already going to be set and there's going to be a, a resident already ready to move in as soon as the last nail is driven. And when you're talking about buying a house in distressed condition and then hiring your turnkey provider to then do the rehab on that for you, there's just a whole lot more question marks. And this is another one of those right. questions that was born out of the pain that we've heard so many times. And I have to say, I tend to see that not always, but I see I tend to see that type of deal also go with them. Um, estimated rents. And one of the things that I find confusing or, or I don't understand is when I'll see someone saying this property will rent between $750 and $850. That's a huge swing. $100 to someone at that rent level is enormous. There should be a huge difference. And I find it odd that someone wouldn't know it that much. And so I, it's not always correlated, but you tend to be working with a predicted rent also with that in my experience. I find it questionable that the provider wouldn't know the market to a finer detail. Absolutely. And the difference if you're talking about a house that's renting, sometimes we'll see in the Philby a sale rent between you know seven fifty and eight fifty. That hundred dollars correlates to approximately a seven to eight thousand dollars in purchase price value. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're seeing turnkey providers out there that have a rent range, do yourself a favor, drill down deep, hop on Zillow or other uh, rent comp websites and check the rent out yourself. 
to a novice investor, they might not understand really the difference between a $750 rent and an $850 rent. That difference might only be about 12% or so. But when it comes down to your cash flow, that $100 disparity, that transitions straight to your cash flow. That's the difference between a $200 cash flow and a $300 cash flow. So if you go ahead and extrapolate those 50% differences over your portfolio, you want to make sure that you're focused on the right thing and that you are getting the estimated rent. When it comes to cash flow, sometimes investors might notice that, well, wait a second. Now, there are properties in your city selling for $125,000 and other properties in your city selling for about half that, say $62,000. But each one of those properties at those different price points, they have the same $290 a month cash flow. So why the disparity? What do you tell folks there? The disparity, you know, itself, of course, is just the higher mortgage, higher rents, lower mortgage, lower rent. That you could say, well, they're both throwing off uh, $300. What is the difference? You would think that maybe it's the same return. Obviously, the return is lower on the front end because just the, the sheer down payment, what you're spending to get that $300 a month. And you may, appreciation is speculative, but you could say, well, you know, this higher end home, maybe I feel like that has a, a better chance of that. And I'm also getting the $300. But there's so much more to it that's hidden. You know, if you have those two houses and they're both occupied for, we'll say two years, and they both experience one month of vacancy, you're already actually doing the hiring property a favor in that estimate because it has a smaller pool of renters. I've done very white collar property management for years and years and years before I came to work for Mid-South. And in my experience, white collar renters move a lot more rapidly. I have never seen a white collar renter rent for six years. They become homeowners almost without exception. You do just have a smaller pool of renters the more your rent is, but we'll still just give it to them and we'll say it's just one month of vacancy on for both of it. You're carrying utilities on a larger space. You're doing maintenance on a larger space. You have a much larger mortgage payment that you make without rent coming in. To get that higher rent, you absolutely needed to provide a garbage disposal, a dishwasher, a garage door opener that the clicker is lost every single turn. (laughs) In my experience, white collar renters also will way more call in a work order because the doorknob handle is loose. They expect a far higher level of sort of minuscule repairs, light bulb changes, stuff like that. And then really just on the return side, I guess you t- your get ready costs, your costs between renters are also fundamentally about the square footage a lot of times. And those higher rent houses are almost always larger as well. So outside of the initial lower return from just spending more money for the same thing, even with similar occupancy rates, the other house will bleed really a little bit more. Absolutely. Those price points might be different for the city that you live in based on those disparities. But in Memphis, those are the prices we're talking about for a newly renovated home already tenanted and in a decent neighborhood. What type of neighborhoods are your properties in? We're looking for properties in Memphis in what we call a sweet spot. In most major cities or in all major cities, really, there are neighborhoods that you don't want to go in. You know, we call them the war zone. You don't want to work in the war zone because the properties turn over too fast. And you want to own property where people want to live, not where people have to live. But then on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you go up too high and you get up into uh, neighborhoods that are predominantly owner occupant, you're going to have to pay so much for the property. And then you factor in the property taxes. And like Liz was talking about, the larger properties that just cost more to maintain, the returns diminish, you know, too high. So stay away from the high stuff because the cash flow is not good enough. Stay away from the low stuff. But even though it looks attractive on paper, it's not good. And so we want to operate in the sweet spot. And in Memphis, that's in the mid 50 to high 80 range. Uh, Keith, about 90% of my life is explaining what a $60,000 house is to Californians. <laughs> and there's no frame of reference for that for most folks, let alone that it's in a, a safe, desirable neighborhood where the lawns are mowed, kids are riding their bikes down the sidewalks, there's pride of ownership, you know, visible around the neighborhood. Memphis is, is lucky that we have these great blue collar neighborhoods like that. They're working class neighborhoods filled with wonderful people with long term jobs. And one thing you can look at within a property management company to determine the neighborhoods that we're working in uh, with us, we have incredibly strict renter requirements. If you get approved with Mid-South homebuyers, you would get approved with anyone in town within the limits of your income. We're working with people with choices and options. People with choices and options don't live in bad neighborhoods. And so if you have a property management company with consistently strict criteria, they're going to have to work in good neighborhoods or you'd be vacant. Right now, we are approving one out of six applicants. 
One way to define the sweet spot is having that favorable ratio of rent income to purchase price. And if you can get close to one, you're doing pretty good. And property taxes and your mortgage interest rate are sort of secondary considerations that you want to look at after you see that favorable rent to value ratio. But of course, it all comes down to what's it look like on your cash flow spreadsheet. That rent to value ratio being close to a one, that's just sort of a topical thing, a quick hit thing. And then from there, you can go ahead and dig down into how that property actually performs. And yes, you want to have places that are in a safe neighborhood. If something rents for better than a 1% rent to value ratio, well, is it a safe neighborhood? If it's a safe neighborhood, it's more likely to be the type of neighborhood where the tenant actually will pay the rent. That's the difference between physical occupancy and economic occupancy. Another really important question that more savvy real estate investors know to ask about is now you as a turnkey provider, do you own the property management company that's going to be managing the same property that you're selling? Yeah, this is a great question to ask because there are a lot of outfits out there that do a really good job of rehabbing the properties, but they don't own the property management companies that are going to be managing the property for the buyer long term. And the reason that's a big deal is because if there is a problem with the property, whether it's an AC issue or a drain issue or a resident issue, all of the accountability is under one roof. And what we have seen is folks will buy houses from someone and the house you know, looked great and it was a pretty good house, but then they have issues with the management company and the manager will point fingers at the seller and then the seller will point fingers back at the manager. And the accountability, like I say, is not all under one roof. Yeah. And if you're buying a property that's been completely rehabbed, that ought to come with a warranty for labor and material on all the work. And if you have bought the property from an investor that's not going to be managing the property, there's not an incentive there for the seller to either warranty the property or make good on the warranty. And this is, again, is just stuff that we've seen from multiple uh, folks who have bought from us over the years and uh, just something we thought we ought to throw into the report. Yeah, because you can really have your hands tied if you are 100 plus miles away, there's repairs and vacancy and the seller is assuring you that the repairs and vacancy are all of the fault of the property management company and the property management company is assuring you that the rent is too high and the house is in poor condition. It's not a fun situation. And as far as kind of uh, where the bodies are buried and poking around to, I have as I've I've toured in a lot of different markets and talked with a lot of different turnkey providers across the U.S. and I have actually had people tell me point blank, and I don't think they were intending to mislead me, their property management was in-house. And when I scratched deeper, what I found out that they meant was that the property was already being managed by a company that they had a strong relationship with that managed all of the properties they sold, and that I would not have to secure my own management. But that's still not actually the same as in-house. And I had to press a little harder to discover that it was, in fact, a third-party property management company. So you may have to press on that a little bit. It's not that someone can't find a good deal out there buying a house from yeah. someone then having it managed by someone else. But if you can find a provider and they are out there who is managing the property and owns the management company after you bought the house, that's definitely where you want to go if you can. So some of these wrong answers aren't necessarily deal killers, but they are things that you want to look into closely. And yeah, that's some really good due diligence that you did there, Liz. We're discussing the 19 fatal turnkey real estate investing mistakes with Terry Kerr and Liz Nallen from Mid-South Homebuyers. More when we come back. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Cashflow real estate investors, if you're looking for a mortgage loan with a company that specializes in investment property loans, it's Ridge Lending Group. They provide income property loans in almost every U.S. state. Ridge has worked with tens of thousands of investors and homeowners all over the country. In fact, with ethics and transparency, they've helped more people realize their dreams through real estate investing than any other mortgage lender in the country. Get started at RidgeLendingGroup.com. This is Rich Dad Advisor Ken McElroy. Listen to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold and don't quit your daydream. Welcome back to Get Rich Education. We're discussing the 19 fatal, fatal turnkey real estate investing mistakes with Terry Kerr and Liz Nallen from Mid-South Homebuyers. We talk about a few things here at Get Rich Education, and if we can discuss preventing fatalities, I am all for it. So, <laughs> Terry and Liz, what is your occupancy rate? That's another great question to ask a prospective turnkey provider. It is. It is. Our occupancy right now is just below 99%. 
It's a question that you need to ask any turnkey provider or any property management company that you're working with. And then when they answer that question, ask them what the longest vacancy is on their books. If they can't tell you, there's a problem Uh because it should be front and center. And then when they tell you what the longest vacancy is, ask them why. And the answer might be, oh, it's a two bedroom, one bath house, and they just don't do too well. Well, you just got yourself some knowledge there. Occupancy rate is huge. And yeah, asking them what the reason is for the occupancy rate is is a good one too. Is a good way of uh, finding out if the rents are set appropriately, as we were talking about earlier. The more it rents for, the more a turnkey provider can sell it for. It's that temptation to really push the rent for folks is out there and very real. But it often results in uh, poor occupancy rates if they're asking a little bit too much for the property. That is a great tip. I think a lot of us know to ask about overall occupancy rate in your manager's portfolio. But, yeah, that really can tell you a lot if you find out what their longest occupancy is. Do you charge application fees to potential tenants? Yeah, I'll tell you, you're probably, you know, you guys, when you're out there doing your due diligence and you're looking for turnkey sellers and you're looking for property managers, most of them are going to charge application fees, but you want to know how much. And if you can find one that doesn't charge application fees, that's a biggie. The reason that we don't, and we vet our potential residents super tight. Like I was saying earlier, only one out of six do we even approve? So, you know, still doing the background check, the criminal background check, the employment verification, the rental verification, making sure that they're making three plus times the rent, all that good stuff. But by not charging application fees, what happens is is if you've got a house in St. Louis and your management company is not charging an application fee, there's going to be a lot more applicants apply and the property is going to fill quicker. And with more folks applying, the management company is going to get a better chance better shot at finding a more qualified applicant. So the reason most property management companies charge the application fee is because it's an income source for them. But we found through holding our own properties when we first got into this business by foregoing the application fee, eating it ourselves, a lot more folks show up and then you get referrals and you just build that reputation. So look for it if you can find it. But if you can't find it, it's not a deal killer, but it's definitely something good to get if you can find it. Yeah. And realistically, it's wonderful that we're able to afford to do it all at our own cost. You probably won't find anyone that's doing none, but there's a big difference between $15 and $50. And if someone's charging $50 a head, which is not uncommon at all, it's a pretty big income stream for them and it's going to limit the pool. And I can just say I came up from 19 years old in property management and being a leasing agent and people outside of that industry. It was my favorite special any owner gave me ever. It helped me fill the houses so much. I can't even stress how much my personal experience supports the effectiveness of that. I was able to fill properties quicker with no application fee than I would with waiving the half of the first month's rent, but still trying to get them to pay $50 just to apply. So it actually has more of an impact than higher dollar move-in incentives in my experience. And so it's just, it's powerful. Waiving the application fee is one of those things that's seemingly small, but when you do that, you go ahead and do give yourself a bigger buyer pool. You are able to accept only one of every six applicants, including the applicant that might be a bit frugal and doesn't want to pay an application fee, but yet might have a great credit score and be a great tenant. That really plays into, I think, when a prospective investor is vetting a turnkey real estate investing company, it's exciting. They're thinking about all the sunny side up stuff and how soon they're going to increase their income stream. But, you know, one of those things to be concerned about over time, since these are long term investments, are when they do have some inevitable renovations down the road. Do you and your property management company mark up materials or not? That is a biggie. So when you're checking out a property management company or you're checking out a turnkey seller that owns the property management company, ask them to see their property management agreement. If they are marking up materials, and I don't know anyone who's not marking up materials besides us, the percentage needs to be in there. Typical in our market is anywhere between 10 to 20 percent, but material markup is a big deal. You know, if it's going to cost you 4,000 bucks to put on a new roof and the materials are being marked up 20 percent, half of that's going to be labor. So you're looking at a $400 markup just on on the roofing materials. So it's a biggie. And the longer you own your property, the more the material markup is going to come into play. And not even just the big ticket items. I mean, every bucket of paint, you know, even the little stuff between every turn. I always say if you acquired two identical investment properties 
from me and took one to another property management company, it would be almost shocking how much the one you left with us would outperform its twin uh, management's where the rubber meets the road. But- Absolutely. Well, you're in the Memphis market. That's been touted as the highest cap rate market by renowned sources such as Forbes. And you're able, that gives you the latitude to go ahead and offer investors guarantees, which are almost unheard of in some other markets. So tell us about some of the guarantees that Mid-South Home Buyers offers investors. Well, my favorite is our lifetime vacancy guarantee. It is part of our management agreement. It's affected. It's 10 years from now, 15 years from now. And, and it says that if your property were ever vacant for more than 90 days, Mid-South, not in a loan, not anything else, would just directly begin paying you rent from the 91st day on until we filled the property. I have to admit, it's very easy to say because we have never had to pay out on it. And the real purpose, the reason I had actually asked Terry uh, many, many years ago if we could put this in writing. And the reason I did it was that kind of going back to inflated rents and pushed up rents, I was, even though we had never had a vacancy longer than 45 days or so, I spoke with investors over and over again who had experienced 100 day vacancies with other providers and in other markets because really the rent was too high for a good occupancy. And so what it actually is to do is to put our money where our mouth is, that these properties are rented for performance and long-term occupancy. We've also got bumper to bumper warranty on labor and materials on our new rehab. So if there's a faulty air conditioner or if there's a water heater that leaks or there's a plumbing leak or this or that, we're going to go out and take care of business. In the unlikely event, there would be a turnover within the first year. We're re-renting the property for free. You're looking for a turnkey provider that, like Liz said, is going to put their money where their mouth is. And if you can get a turnkey provider that also owns the management company, there won't be the finger pointing and and you'll be doing yourself a favor if you can locate an outfit that can provide that. And the longer, the better. I think one or two people might be doing one years, but really mostly the longest I see typically is a 90 day. And so obviously the longer, the better. Yep. Yeah, well, that is really outstanding. There's a maintenance guarantee there you described and a rental guarantee. The maintenance guarantee I've seen with some other turnkey providers, but the rental guarantee, that really is not common. So, Terry, Liz, any final thoughts now that we've talked about the fatal turnkey real estate investing mistakes? We think Get Rich Education is the best podcast and we love it. (laughs) Tell me more. I want to hear more of that. (laughs) Keith, you're awesome. We appreciate you very much. Terry and Liz, thanks so much for coming back onto the show. (laughs) Thank you, Keith. Take care. Well, when you start to learn more about what makes the Mid-South Homebuyers Success Formula distinctly them, it's things like no application fees, not marking up materials and more. A lot of these 19 fatal real estate investing mistakes obviously transcend just Memphis, Tennessee. They're applicable in other markets wherever you're looking to add your next few properties. I've got another question that you can ask a prospective property manager. Does your company have in-house handymen? You know, some companies might tout that as a benefit to you, the investor, and it sure can be because in-house handymen, they're going to be able to respond to your tenants' concerns faster and having in-house handymen might look to you like you'll be charged a lower labor rate than if they had to outsource maintenance requests to a third-party company. But see, then that turnkey company they now have a fixed overhead expense to those handymen because that means that they're company employees and they've got to keep those handymen busy. So does that mean that they're going to start looking for stuff to repair for you that you might not really need to be fixed? Is that a conflict of interest if they authorize your repairs? Well, that could be a conflict to your cash flow right there. So that's just another great due diligence question to ask. Does your company have in-house handyman. You're not necessarily looking for a yes or a no, but see how they handle those follow-up questions. Find out where their motivation lies. Is the property currently occupied? That's another key question. Having it occupied is actually part of the definition of turnkey. We didn't get to every one of those 19 fatal turnkey real estate investing mistakes that you must avoid, but Mid-South Homebuyers founder Terry Kerr put together a nice report outlining all 19 of those important due diligence questions that you've got to ask. The report has the Get Rich Education logo on the cover too, and it might be the most valuable thing you've ever read on how to really get to the bottom of what makes a great real estate investment for you. If you want that report for free, 
just relax. It is being sent to every Get Rich Education newsletter subscriber soon. If you don't currently get our free newsletter, all that you need to do is subscribe free at GetRichEducation.com. As always, I'm ultimately most concerned with your return on time and that the value of the time that you spent here was only exceeded by the quality of what you've learned today. Grab the report, 19 Fatal Real Estate Investing Mistakes That You Must Avoid at GetRichEducation.com and know that I appreciate the fact that you don't quit your daydream. You've been listening to Get Rich Education, telling you what the wealthy won't tell you about real estate and investing. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.